bucks, maybe less, depending on the uh, sale. Um, and so you put matter, and it warps space-time. And so if I have another object, it also warps space-time. They feel that, and they're attracted to each other. And so that's, a, that's Einstein's picture of gravity. Objects warp space-time, feel that curvature, and move accordingly. And if you have more mass, You're right there. If you have more mass, it's going to bend space-time more. And so if you have objects here, they are going to respond to that, right? And so you put something there, now it's attracted. Now, in reality, that big mass would feel the warping of space-time by the marble, too, right? It would move a little bit, but we usually, we usually ignore that. You know, the Earth makes the sun move a little bit, but it's so small you can ignore it. The moon makes the earth kind of wobble around a point three quarters of the way from the center of the earth. We usually don't uh, uh, account for that when we're looking at satellite motion. Well, instead of just letting go of one, what if I give it a sideways push? Now it orbits. Now it's losing energy, which wouldn't happen uh, in, uh, in the solar system, right? Not noticeably. There's some perturbations from other planets and things but this one does lose energy and spirals in. If I don't push it as hard, it will do an ellipse, for a while anyway. And let's get some more here. To measure the force of attraction between it and the Earth. Its weight is 152.166 grams. Now we move the heavy lead ball under the scale, adding its mass to the mass of the Earth. The weight has increased by one thousandth of a gram, which represents the attraction between the pyramid and the ball. When the mass under the pyramid got bigger, the force of attraction did too.